Hey everybody, it's Emily, the Crazy Worm Lady. I am here today to finally end our neglect experiment on the European night crawlers and the blue worms. So I have both of the 10 gallon totes sitting inside these mortar trays. I'm gonna dump um, each one of them into the mortar trays so we can take a peek and see how the worms did. Um, you can notice that the levels inside these, these bins has dropped significantly. We were nearly to these um, first set of drilled holes in both of the bins and it has shrunk down substantially. So let me pop these open and we will take a peek and see how the worms did. Okay guys, so um, this is our first mortar tray. This is actually our European night crawlers. And as I was dumping them out, I noticed something and I wanna see if you guys noticed the same thing. There was dried bedding on top, so some of that obviously is not composted. But I'm gonna zoom in while I flip through a little bit of this. The compost though is beautiful very dark rich fully processed of course aside from the little bits from the top but if I zoom out What do you think about the size of these guys? I'm a little bit interested in the fact that these guys look very small. And I wonder if that is um, part of the process when you neglect a bin that a lot of the adults die off as a result and the babies that hatch are able to thrive more successfully. Not to say that there's no adult worms in here, but even the adults that I am finding are rather small. So, just a, an interesting observation. But there are worms. The cabbage leaves that I felt certain were going to still be in here are gone. The only thing I saw was the shell of an avocado, which those tend to last forever. So I wasn't super surprised to see that, but... Everything in here looks really, really well. I'm going to mix this whole tray up, even some of the dry bedding that dried out on the surface. Mix that through. Even in our neglect phase, I only added water um, maybe three or four times total, and I just would sprinkle down the top. And these did not have lids on them. So um, the consistency, it was actually a hair muddy in spots when I dumped it out, mainly in the corners, but this is completely siftable compost and I think that is going to be my plan to sift this out sooner rather than later get it in the garden this year but I'm going to turn this top to bottom we're going to take a look at the blue worms and then I think we might try um, in this tray to horizontally migrate these worms over so that we can um, finish harvesting these castings as easily as possible so let me uh, adjust my camera so we can take a look at the blue worms and we'll take it from there Okay, so here's the contents of the blue worms. And again, blue worms are a small worm. They're smaller than the European night crawlers, smaller even than the red wigglers, at least in um, diameter. But these are all primarily, if I can get the camera to focus, very small worms. You see that little one right there? These are tiny, tiny babies. And I'm, I don't think I'm seeing any cocoons in here that I, I can see very easily. If they're here, they're not very apparent. But again, the castings are great. There's a really good number of worms in here. But again, just very small. Um, but I think what I really wanted to show with this experiment is that worms can thrive even in conditions that are less than ideal, which for these guys, the temperature was fine. It was just the lack of food, the lack of aeration. I think I saw in one of London Worms and Gardens, he said, I think we've proven that sometimes we spoil our worms and it's not necessary. They can do just fine without all of the extras, which is kind of what I'm seeing here because, I mean, just loaded loaded with worms. The castings are beautiful. They're nice and flaky. If you'll notice, there's 
very few, if any, worm bin pests in here. And just these little itty bitty babies, a few little pieces of unprocessed bedding here and there. But the condition is absolutely great, all considering. So, you know, if you are going on an extended vacation, or if you just want to leave your castings over the winter because you don't have space to store them, you want to leave them in the bin. Is that a cocoon? You want to leave them in the bin and not feed it. I think that would be fine. I think the worms would do just fine. If I could hold myself still. There we go. That is a cocoon. It's the only one I've seen. Sorry for knocking my camera twice. But um, it's encouraging to me. And as I'm going through this bin itself, I am noticing a few cocoons, actually. But I didn't see any in the European uh, bin, which doesn't mean they're not there. I just think there might be fewer of them. So this compost is all ready to use. So I think just for um, an added layer to our experiment, I'm going to horizontally migrate these worms. So I'm going to push all of the contents on both of these um, mortar trays all the way up to the back and we're going to um, horizontally migrate them up to the front. If I had this bin turned the right way that would make more sense but we're just going to migrate them. So I'm going to do that, I'm going to get some bedding together, get some food and we'll work on trying to get all of our worms down here so we can pull these castings out and put them to use. Okay guys, so I added some um, fruit scraps. They're still frozen. There's like some banana peels, um, orange slices, apple cores, um, and I did the same over here. And then a whole bunch of coffee, coffee grounds that were used up. So all of that was added one to each of these little mortar trays. I'm gonna put a healthy sprinkling of my dry mix. I think this is gonna be super enticing to worms that have not had actual food in several months and I'm not going to cover them with um, the existing castings because everything is frozen so I'm going to take these pieces of newspaper and kind of turn it over so that it's covered should have had this position better to start so I'm gonna have it just like this and I'll take this piece and then I'm gonna move the castings right down up to the edge, but not into it so that we don't bother the worms with the frozen temperatures. And then I'm just gonna put some shredded cardboard across the top here. So the same thing over here, I'm gonna cover it with our newspaper, and have it nice, somewhat wrapped up for them. And I'll do the same thing over here. I have another piece of newspaper from this one that I didn't add back in for some reason. And then I'll just um, pull these castings down to the edge. There we go. And then I'm just gonna put some, some loose uh, shredded cardboard along this front rim on both of them. And we will give them another week and we will see how long it takes for them to rebound their size um, as well as to migrate over to the food source so that we can use the castings in the garden. Because I think we started this, I'll, I'll put it in the, the description. I wanna say we started this in November, so almost four months ago. So I wanna make sure I'll have the date exactly. And we wanna see how long these worms take to getting back to their normal behaviors and how long it'll take us to then use these castings in the garden. So let me know what you think guys. Drop those comments below, like this video, subscribe if you'd like some more content from me. I am thoroughly impressed, I am um, relieved, and I can't wait to see what we can do with these guys now that they are out of their neglect phase.